Okay, that's it. Up to you, Hula. Okay, thanks. Um, shall we wait still for maybe one more minute? Because I see it's just nine of us, and I'm just conscious that some people might still be running from, um, you know, previous. Yeah, sure. It's a little bit mm -hmm. small, but anyways, it's fun. So maybe let's make uh, a check in. So let let know each other. Can you say Chutemilech, yeah. or is it wrong in the Netherlands for for the evening Chutemilech or not? Patricia. Goedenavond. Goedenavond. <laughs> we always um we always um try to um put the location of where we are based in our names. Maybe we can try this just to see. We'll have to respect. So if I go in and I try to change my name. You have a secret name. So I don't need to introduce myself. I see this huge uh, egocentric presentation on, on, on a website, who I am. It's, then you have this kind of, whoa, it's me. Now, now try to uh, try to guess, guess where, what is the origin of my last name? It's quite tricky. Try to guess origin of my last name. German? Used to be, but originally not. Austria? No. <laughs> okay. Belgium. Ah, very close. Uh, it, it's the German translation of a Dutch name, which is written N I J S used to come from the region of Maastricht and uh, Liège or Leuven. Le Le no, Leuk. It's just close to the border of uh, this kind of uh, Netherlands. This was before 16th century. So it was my revenge about Ula's uh, um, misguessing. Uh, mis who are you? Hey, Patricia, who are you? What are you doing? How is your mood today? Um, my, my mood is uh, great. Um, I just already had a, a workshop. So this is my second workshop today. So for full, uh, full of energy. And uh, I'm an agile coach uh, for the government. Nice. And who do you want to ping out in, in the crowd to have the same presentation? Uh, Zach Moore. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Simone. I'm sorry, my daughter is having a drum session here. So <laughs> I'm in the diner room. I'm uh, an agile coach. I'm from Rome and I'm working for um, defense industry in the defense industry in a company that works in the defense. So it's quite uh, strange to work agile in a defense. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. First satellite and the missiles have been developed in using extreme programming 15 years ago. Okay. Thanks. Same okay. thing for you. Oh, uh, let's ping out. Let's ping out. Hello all. Uh, I'm Priscilla. I'm from Brazil, but I'm living in France. Uh, I am a agile coach of a private uh, company in the telecommunications area. So we are, we are transforming ourselves. We are passing through the transformation. Salut. That's always fun. Bonsoir. <laughs> I'm, I'm conscious of time because it's five past already and I think we could just give it a go. Although people are still joining us. So I will ask, who are you, Zach Moore? Or Zach Moore, I don't know. Maybe I mispronounce it. No, um, both are valid. Uh, Moore is an Irish name originally, um, pronounced Moore. Um, and in England, it's anglicized to Moore. So you're quite right. Um, I have been 
around agile ways and means since the mid 80s. So I picked up a lot of agility um, in the Army Reserve. Uh, I'm now of the opinion that with agile, there's two types of planning. There's staff planning, which the administrators use, i.e. people who are grade four to seven in a seven grade scheme. Underneath that, you've got combat planning, which is where you go plan forward, plan backwards, plan one up, two up, and then go. Um, I'm interested in games because I think that we're moving into an experience economy where we've gone from projects to product to services and experiences will come next. Um, so I'm very interested to see what we've got here. Uh, so I coach, I do product management, I set up my own businesses. Um, I'm a Zach of all trades. Okay, so you, we, we will have this in Mr. Moore and Mr. Nice. Great. Yeah, uh, just, just one point from me about Zach. Zach will have a talk for our community in, uh, in June. So I'm going to create the event uh, in the next day. So I want to say thanks uh, to Zach and clearly to Pierre for sharing uh, his, their own experience with our community. Hey, Enrico, who are you? Oh, Enrico is on mute, always watching the Netflix. It's Miguel. Unmute. Still a mute. We can't hear you. Yeah, it's she's on the seaside. I think <laughs> maybe oh. we can start the event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think so because it's already um, we're almost ten past. Um, so welcome everyone. I'll just spare uh, 30 seconds um, before we start, um, just to invite you to our next event, maybe. So um, the next one that we're going to have is also in March, and it's going to be about Agile Industrial Complex with um, panel with Matt Mezik and Minudel. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it very wrong. I'm sorry. It's Mezik. Um, but please join us on the 22nd of March. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the Agile Animal Farm game. So that's an interesting one. I've seen a lot of games in Agile. I haven't seen any anything like that. <laughs> sure, you can't see anything like that. <laughs> um, so uh, rapidly who I am. Um, so I'm, I'm pure, I'm French German. So I'm a German with French citizenship living in Switzerland. This is quite good. I used to live also in London and working in London. And I'm an Agile coach, but not from since the 80s, uh, just 15, 18 years ago. Before I was in the lean and I'm coming not from the pure software development. I did a little bit of software development when I was in high school. Uh, and then I moved in the back part of business uh, organization, marketing, project management, and digital platforms. Um, but I working with a lot of people like this, like everyone, I do uh, transformations. I do this since quite a long time. And uh, usually I do a lot of um, crazy, uns, uh, let's say not really realistic stuff. So usually I have big complaints. So 10 years ago, when I started a asking question, has anyone to have a clue making Agile in the finance industry? You see, oh, you're crazy. And seven years ago, oh, I want to go to work with SAP. Oh, you here, there's a piece of shit on the market you have to work in, what's happening? So that's who I am. So I want to test the limits of Agile and I test it everywhere. So I launched a couple of programs like Agile for HR 10 years ago. And um, I, I'm research, so I'm a senior manager for Cognizant Digital uh, Solutions uh, here in, uh, in Zurich, but it's covering the most of Europe, helping big companies transforming. Also, I have my company, which I do research uh, about uh, complex LP system theory, everything which is not billable, it's in my research part. 
and um, and gaming gamification is a huge part of it. So if you understand what we are going in, what way of going when we say agile about nonlinear systems, when you have to expect in having a bubbling up ideas and build on the top of it, having this kind of uh, innovation all the time, you have to understand that the way you lead, the way you work, uh, is not the same you do uh, like in traditional businesses. So you have really to think about to to influence the system or maybe to cope with the system, even to negotiate with the system. And gamification is a good way to remove the fear in the change part. So if you make a game of your work, if you make you doing this game of agile, it was it's quite helpful for people to understand because it's not really it's serious, but it's serious gaming. So if you fail, it doesn't hurt. It's just a game. So that's the big trick behind this. Um, we will use Miro today. Uh, we will, uh, you don't need to be a Miro expert. No, no worries. It's uh, very, very light. You will have presentation slide and I will download it in the PDF format. We will work in groups and I will tell you the story. So the, the crea creation of this game, Animal Farm is quite old, 10 years ago. Uh, it was just, I was already annoyed to explain Agile through the lens of the Agile Manifesto, the declaration of interdependence about Agile manufacturing, and even coming with this kind of books, hey, this is where it comes up, the first in 1990. And so it was quite annoying because we came up with the ideas of a theory about method and tools instead about individuals and interactions, which is the key word you have to think. And either real individuals, everybody knows their interactions or maybe the communication and how people are interacting together builds a system. A team is a set of system. So, it's, uh, so I'm a systematic thinker, a system thinker. So it came for me, it was absolutely logical to work this. And through this game, I also used to work with uh, uh, somebody maybe you don't know is somebody called Mike Biddle. Um, one of the signature of the manifesto he was uh, our co-writer, the first book of Scrum. And we were, used to work in enterprise Scrum because he was interested about how you work uh, in this um, kind of games. So a game for lazy coaches, lazy trainers to explain by doing it. So let's come here. I will go and put in the chat the link to the mirror board. And feel free to go there. And I will start sharing my screen. Oops. Please tell me if you see it because I can't see any I can't see you any longer. Yeah, it's all fine. Okay, so you see lovely slides, and I will tell you the story about this. So connect share, this is already done. This is me, this is already done. So the whole, the whole story of uh, Angel Animal Farm uh, was me reading a blog post of uh, Mario Moreno um, about uh, Agile Animal Farms. And most of all, all the text is all coming from Mario Moreno. And usually what happens, I, I read this the first time, so, oh, that's really stupid. Then I came back the next day, mm, there's maybe something. Then I say, oh, there is maybe something a little bit more interesting behind this. So I give all the credits to Mario Moreo, who come up with um, a post, a blog post inspired by um, Orwell's Animal Farm and bring in the context of Agile. The angle, the angle of Agile is about personas and behaviors. It means we all have characters, we all have some kind of behaviors, and we try to understand, the game will be to try to understand about what it means. So let's go directly to the story. So uh, if you know, if you're an old guy in the Agile, you know, we all have this kind of story, a pig, the chicken, and the chicken say, well, let's build a restaurant together. 
and a pixie of thank you, uh, which is called uh, eggs and hounds. And in the, in the, in the pixie, oh, sorry, I don't want to be involved. I just want to be committed. Uh, so it about pigs. So agile team members, doers or pigs, typically they are fully engaged in their work and are working in the pig pen with pigs sharing the same love of the job. They're assertive and accountable on their work. So typically is engage people at work. You're coming with a full passion and you're doing your job. You want to do things, right? This is typically a behavior of a pig. And this is also what we intend to do with Agile. So here, for the sake of the game, we say Agile people are pigs. Then you have other rules. Hello, I missed you. Sorry, I'm scrolling the wrong direction. Uh huh. Then you have other rules. You have other animals like chicken. Chicken are coming and going around the world. They're helpful. They will like to contribute with eggs. There can be rotten eggs, broken eggs, or fresh eggs. It depends. They're just happy to give you eggs, right? So this is typically some SMEs, some managers, people that are right to help you to do the thing. Are they caring about what you're doing? Not at all. They just, they just give you budget. So I want to have a server. Here, yeah, server. I need to have more people. Here, people. This is typically chicken. Right. Then you have foxes. They like to walk stealingly through the team and check out who has skills and ideas. And they want to steal not only the resources and team members, but they want to steal ideas for their own team, for their own sake. Right. They're not always, they're not quite negative, but they just have a different agenda that you have. So you have here some manager asking you to come just for five minutes to estimate another project. They are stealing the budget, meaning your time from the budget, the project you're working on for their own sake. This is typically a fox attitude. On another hand, you have here seagulls. They like to fly around the project, not contribute in any manner. They just love to talk. And mostly they love to talk about themselves. And are bringing no added value. And they love to annoy the pigs. And they like to swoop and fly on one side and then poop on somebody else. They squawk, they do it. They're noisy, right? Sometimes people say, I'm a coach because I'm, I'm, I'm a seagull. Because I come and they're talking. And this is just annoying. So seagulls are another role. So you have to remember all this. Then you have rats deceivers that come and destroy the anti-agile they're just negative people they, they they turn your project from another angle from a different context that just break down everything this is quite quite negative right or typically when you can say you plan a big budget for a whole year and after the first quarter finance comes oh you have to reduce 30 percent of the budget these are usually rats right then you have cats. They're quite lazy type of people. They're not noisy. They love, they're not contributed. They're sitting in the corner, just sleeping. They're not positive, negative, not negative. They don't want to be left alone. The other team members will begin to, to notice the behavior and realize they're not interested in becoming part of the team. So I'm part of this big consulting company. And we, we love having this kind of profile, which is all usually low cost profile because you're in, in the team forever. We can build you all the time and you deliver very little value because you're not costing that much money. But these are also annoying agile people. Then you have bulls, common and control types and Bulls, like bulls, paternalistic, very macho. I'm the boss, you listen to me. And here is like in the books, you know, very patronizing, straightforward. Uh, they don't care about what you do. They just care about what they do. And you have uh, heard their services. So these are bulls. So now it's no longer, um, and bulls can be masculine or feminine, right? And you have the agile coach. 
these are all the animals. So the idea, we, have, we will make some rounds. Uh, rounds about, I'm um, gonna stop sharing because I want to see your faces. There's a lot of animals, but no worries. We will make uh, two, three, four iterations and to play a game. So the game will be, I will create breakout rooms. You have to play one of the roles you can choose during an iteration of um, five, 10 minutes, let's say 10 minutes, right? So again, you will have a first iteration, 10 minutes, pick up one of the roles and you have to play the role. And I give you something to do and you have to play the role. Is that okay? Yes, Pierre, it's okay. Hello. <laughs> yes, Pierre, it's amazing. Yeah, oh, I love it. Oh, so great. <laughs> okay, I try to uh, create the breakout rooms now. Okay, I want to create a couple of breakout rooms. Uh, four to five participants. I will be, we will have five rooms. Um, here, I want to see how, much, how long. I will put it 10 minutes. 10 minutes per cat room. Okay, here before opening the breakup rooms, please note the requirements. Uh, I want you to create, to design, to draw uh, by using one of the spaces you have below uh, on the mirror board is an around num. You have the team members, team numbers. It's, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five teams. So one breakout room is a team and you use round one uh, um, uh, template. It's uh, There you have to design to draw a landscape with five different flowers, with five different colors, and then you have to have a sun. And you have to play the roles. I will open now all the rooms and you have 10 minutes to do the job and then you come back. Have fun. So I John, I will assign you to room number three. I stay here. Yeah. That's that's fine. I'm I'm looking, so you can look you, you can look what happened. So usually round number one, people will be lost. They have to find a how to do it. And the round number one is learning, experiencing uh, collective learning. So requirements. Um, sorry, Pierre. So the exercise is to draw five flowers of different colors, right? Exactly. And a sun while playing your role. Okay. So I just progressed, progressed the requirement and I put the requirements in the chat so you can find it. Hey, Andres, are you not in, a, in, a, in one of the rooms?
I can already see one sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, I will go in, in the rooms just to see what happening, what's happening.
a pair. Can you tell something about what's happening? You say? I, I say if you can make some comment on what's happening before uh, closing the breakout rooms. No, no, we will we will come back and we'll make the comments all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to say something offline, this is what I meant. No, no, it's quite it's quite good. Yeah. But uh, I see usual suspect. They, I'm curious to see what kind of rules they try to, to play, because only pigs can draw, boy. Right? <laughs> so if you don't have pigs, you have nothing. So in 30 seconds, they are back. Excellent. So let's see what happened. Let's make this discovery part. Hey, Zach, how was it? <coughs> Welcome back. So still looking very serious. It was just the first round. So let's debrief on the results. Um, let's go, I have to share, I will share my screen and I will ask every team to explain what you have done and what are the roles you, you saw. So let's go in team number one. Who was part of team number one? So there, are uh, two Michaels who are the same person who uh, actually could not participate because of personal commitment. Uh, and so we have Patricia and Maru and I, so three people. Um, I am the bull, which I got them calling out to and said that you just sound just like my boss who always tell me what to do. Okay, so Moonway. Who played what role of your team members? I have absolutely no idea. But I think Maru is the pig. I think because he's the only one drawing. Ah, good point. And, and according to him, he is, uh, he is from a different galaxy, an alien from a different galaxy. That's why his son, his son has a uh, white dot inside a white hole instead of a black hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, another one of the team member, team number one. And I yeah, that's no right. Oh. Sorry, Patricia. Yeah, I was about to say, I have no idea what role Patricia is saying, was playing, so I'm curious. Yeah, I, I tried to be the, the seagull, so um, more to talking, less less of the uh, the drawing itself, but more uh, in a, yeah, try to coach a bit. Uh. I was, uh, I, was uh, I was a fox. So I was very sneaky and I tried to manipulate the whole drawing to my own purpose because I was in a mood of having fun with my other partners because I'm a fox. But I really have no idea what animal Moon Y was. So Seagull was, uh, Seagull was Patricia, but who was Moon what animal was Moon Y? I'm bull. That's what you said. I sound just like your boss. Ah. Always tell me what to do. Yeah, you should have guessed it. <laughs> so somebody else from the team? That's it. The other, the other two are the same person, and that person cannot uh, cannot participate. <laughs> That's excellent. That's a good point. Lovely. Thank you so much, guys. Team number two. Hi. I'm just trying to find um, on mute then. Um, yes, yeah, so there's just the three of us in the the um, the room. So Mattia was unable to participate verbally. So I think we assigned him to the role of the cat as he sat in the background. And then there was um, Chris and myself. And I think, to be fair, we interchanged roles between the pigs and the bulls. So um, I was mostly predominantly doing the drawing. So mostly falls on the pig side. And um, maybe Chris, I don't want to be just give you any to service, maybe more to the, toward the bull in terms of providing direction. Okay, somebody else. You have just one spokesman. 
Okay, but if you're done, you're done. Let's go yeah. to team number three. Equipe number three. Das dritte team, bitte schön. Yep. Um, I played the part of a fox, so I stole flowers that other people made and put them into my landscape. Hmm, good. Cool. So I will give you a heads up. Um, if you don't code, you should be aware that 90% of your code base is stolen from other places. Tell you it 90% of the stuff are coming from other places. That's excellent. Yep. So um, we should be able to do the work in a tenth of the time. Excellent. Okay, team number four. Uh, here I was responsible for drawing, um, sharing now my role. I was a pig and I was always listening uh, to the team, but uh, mainly Estrella. Because, uh, sorry. Uh, I think it's it was you, right, Estrella? I was not on your team. Sorry, I'm mixing them. It's, a, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's fine. Let's Take jump care. To uh, thank you. Let's go to team number five. Oh, we have always a B, even a B is there. I think we were all acting as pigs, <clears throat> I, even if I was a fox, and I didn't act as a fox. But uh, this is uh, what happened. Uh, I don't know the others. I think uh, Stephen and Ola were with me. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit more complicated when we're online to read. To we did have a problem with foxes, though. <laughs> Someone kept kept stealing my flowers. <laughs> yes, but the cry was not a silly. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, strength and guile. Maybe you have to ask Zach. Yes, indeed. Okay, lovely. This is fun number one. Round number one is just more like an appetizer, just to get a little bit aware about uh, the roles and the, the animals. And, and this is more a learning curve. Let's do the same thing. Round number two, again, same Aaron. Uh, because we have people who left and people are coming, I recreate the rooms. So we will have, um, I will say again, five rooms maybe with other people and exactly the same requirements you have to draw a landscape five different uh, flowers from five different colors and a sun but now you're all playing seagull during the five minutes during five minutes only five minutes and you will be you will see five minutes is larger than enough five minutes same requirements only seagulls A yeah, good result, I would say. Please what? Good result as a first round. Yeah, but I don't looking at the results. We should have nothing now because they are all seagulls. Ah, now for this round, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the round number two, I love to to come with the most terrible profiles you uh, a mix of teams of uh, seagulls and bulls and maybe you add foxes all the plenty negatives because playing this during five minutes is just pure fun and people are allowed to play the bad guy during five minutes that's really really fun so we should and, and when you do it in in a room or in a, in a classroom you will have the level of noise who is raising up the roof, right? 
and you have people talking, they have to talk, they have to argument and all the time. Now I have to go through the, the breakout rooms to see if there's talking because I wasn't the first one. It was quite quiet. At the moment, no one is drawing anything. Huh? Hi, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't join in from the beginning, so I think I missed uh, most of it, and I was unable to help my partner on the uh, exercise. Um, I'll probably join next time and just focus 100% on this, as it no, seems very Elena. interesting activity. I'm very sorry. No, Elena, don't worry, don't worry. It's simply draw, I mean, you have to read one of the profile, the personas, that you have in the upper part. And in particular, in this moment, everyone should be a seagull. So you should read the description of what seagulls do. Yeah. <clears throat> and then behave like this animal in your team. That's just the exercise. The goal of the team is to create a, a painting, okay? Drawing five flowers and one sun. Five flowers of different colors uh, with the sun. That's the goal. Idoria, if you want to know how a seagull behaves, think about the rock. And Idoria, what do you think? <laughs> and who cares what you think? What I'm doing is the best, you know? Because what we do before, it was awesome, it was great, it was the thing. And nobody cares. We don't work with losers like this, like the other teams, you know, the other teams are not good at all. That's a seagull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. I was in a, a breakout room, uh, but uh, um, Elena um, was uh, busy for cooking and uh, the other attendees didn't um, contribute. So I came back to the main room. This is only Pretty the reason sure. why I'm back. <laughs> no worry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't want to mess up with your exercise as well. I feel so no guilty. Worry. You know, no being problem. Able to complete it. We can follow the others when they are back in a few minutes. Yeah. They will be back. The opportunity to behave badly. Yeah. You're invited to behave badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there are people that were really interested in, in doing the exercise. <laughs> but the exercise, oops, the exercise is to behave badly. That's the exercise, actually. <laughs> No, that's a different approach, yeah. Well, actually, I, I'm not so serious as Pierre, but if I have to think about an analogy of uh, a character, actually, I would think about the seagulls in Finding Nemo, the movies, you know, that there are these birds that actually cannot say anything else that mine, 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 and only mine. So that's, I think it's a good idea. Okay, um, can this exercise be done from the mobile or it has to be a PC? <coughs> well, depends on uh, on uh, the platform, but I think you can do also on mobile. So I'm on a Zoom platform, but I'm not sure whether I can uh, access the mirror board. I can see it. Okay, I'm going to copy again the link to the mirror board. Once and, and who cares? Really, who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> you are acting as a seagull. I love to act badly. I love to be a kid. And, and this is the part. This is the part you're unleashing all the bad behaviors because you're allowed to behave like an asshole during five minutes, right? And when you're doing in a classroom, the level of noise that you raise up is over the top, right? Is over the roof. Um, 
do you want to make another try? Because you were lo- way too correct, way too politically correct, way too charming, way too well educated. Think about your French part or maybe your bad Brazilian part, right? Or maybe the bad Italian part in you when you're just out and, and shouting and you're in the traffic jam. Say, what the heck is doing? This is Seagull. And there is no reaction. Why, why, why is no reaction? Totally agree. Hello, hello. I am here. Uh, I'm here too, but... Do you want to make another round of seagulls? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I don't like seagulls. Okay, so let's do another exercise. Um, you Now is the exercise all together. No breakout rooms. All together and you have to move on the part. It's cool. Hold on, I have to remove this. Okay, I had it. I hide it. This is now all together, same thing. And it give you five minutes and exactly the same requirements. You have five minutes, draw a landscape, five, five flowers, five different colors, and a sun, and it's starting now. I have this. I have this. I'm assignment as in we are all seagulls or? No, no, no. You are who you are. You are, you're playing who you are. Well, it's maybe the most uh, complicated. Be yourself. (laughs) So five minutes we have. So oh, first we we can start defining who will draft, right? Who will draw? Sorry. Priscilla, you wait too long. It's a long time you're working in France. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working yes. here in two weeks. <laughs> there is two weeks. I can start the drafting on the Round two, canvas of team one. Then maybe some, someone else can do it on another canvas. Uh, we are in different team or is it everybody together? All together. It's just a one, uh, one draw. Ah, okay. Or several. Like a big family. Like That's a big when you family. try to um, get your teams to figure it out. So... Ideally, what I think you should do is just reuse what you've already got. But then other people have different ideas, so I'm going to let you um, go for it. Oh, three minutes, 30 seconds. I'm looking for annoying music. I'm not sure I I got it. Uh, should we reuse the the draws? That's what you propose. It. No. No. Uh, it's about. Uh... <laughs> I think I missed the instructions. I didn't get it. What should we do? We need to draw as a family. Yeah. uh, Five flowers uh, in different colors in the ground and with a sun. Okay. So as a group uh, instead of a different breakout room. Yes. But I see several people doing independent jobs. 
Maybe we need to draw a line about one draw, no? One drawing. Exactly. One drawing, everybody should talk. It's going to yellow sun, how is going to draw red sun, orange sun. Sorry, guys, I think that there is an area for all on the bottom of the five. Exactly. So I think we should collaborate, everyone, to give our contribution in one single row on the bottom. Exactly. So, or the right or the left when there is their all. Exactly. I was thinking we can do like different type of sun. One is orange, like sunrise, sunset, right? And different flowers. I think people did start already. So, or... Uh... <laughs> Look at the bottom. There are two different. Yeah, still we can start here. One minute. Why we have this reuse here in the bottom? Do you know? But then it's already finished, right? Because there are already two drawings there. Yes. Do you want to reuse one of them? I, I oh, think <clears> someone I put proposed the, it. Um, reuse in. And what you've been instructed to do is just to simply repeat what you did before. What's the point in that? If you're agile, you just take what's already been done and repurpose it. Okay. So that's the reuse is there as an example to say, did we follow the instructions or are we a different type of animal that just does what has to be done? So rather than spoil everybody's fun, it's just a, a counter argument against the instruction. Okay, time off. Okay, stop it. Okay, how, how was it? Difficult to communicate. <laughs> if, if I ask you based on the, the animals, what animals was yours, Priscilla? Mm. I'm not sure, I was trying to play my role. I hope not a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> and I will ask the same question to everyone of you. Zach. Yeah. Zach has a pig. So, I mean, naturally where I would do something is um, reuse what's already been done in the same context. There was no difference. So whether what I don't have in my head is which animal that would be. Yeah, I have the same. Yeah, so here same. it's not thinking about the outcome, but more about how we behave in a large team. Um, but these animals are not scientific. So yeah. if I was... If I was doing this in the real world, I'd be using um, Belbin. If you like. Um, and the other thing with all these approaches is that they're just snapshots. So in some cases, I may be a fox. In other cases, I may be a pig. And I can switch at will. So why, I'm not the best person to be in a big team, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, good, good. So, um, yeah, fine. And Mega, what is your feeling about the role you you played in? Yes, yeah, so I just... feel that we didn't communicate initially. What's the plan? Like which type? Like you said, sun and five flowers. So what type, what type of sun? What type of flowers? Uh, we need to like no one communicate. No, there's no like we didn't connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And what role do you think, if you reflect about what happened during this iteration, uh, what was your role? Or like, animal? Uh, like we talk, 
after two minutes, but then people had already started. So I don't think I was a leader because if I was a true leader, people would listen to me and I would start it initially, right? Yeah, if you were a true leader like I list, it means you will be a bull. Because even a, pig, because pigs has no leaders. That's the interesting part. Um, uh, Idoria. I was a pig. A pig? So you draw, you deliver? Yes. The only the only animal who's uh, who, who is delivering is the pig. All the others are delivering nothing. I was doing the <laughs> the doodling. Okay, excellent. Maru. I, uh, I got very quickly conscious of something that uh, I see very often and I'm also guilty of, which is uh, shifting very quickly into the mode of please tell me what I should do. Uh, and I started asking myself the question, why am I disengaged? Am I really having fun? Am I, what, do I want to play? And I was in that loop for the three, four minutes. <laughs> By the time I got out, it was too late. But uh, I think there is an automated mode that we, we, we got used to at work, which is tell me what to do and I'll do it. Y yes, so you were in the seagull mode. Uh, That's seagull, typically. Okay. But, and Patricia? Uh, I was a pig, so I started uh, drawing already on the, the, the canvas of uh, round two of team one. Mm -hmm. Excellent. John? I kind of felt like a seagull because um, I couldn't get Miro to work again. So as a default, I couldn't do anything. So I just became a seagull. And after becoming a seagull in the last round, you can't really be bothered to get motivated to do anything else. Okay, very well. Thank you. Ula? So um, I decided to be a cat. Fair statement. <laughs> yeah, and just, um, um, just sit quiet. Um, for as long as possible. <laughs> Good. But that's a fair statement. And you, Paul? Um, I jumped in straight away as a chicken and I just got drawing straight away. I was disregarding anything that anybody was saying in the group. I wasn't even waiting for any comms. Huh? Good and I was a bit annoyed when somebody else put another flower onto the picture. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, Michael? Did we lost Michael or oh, Michael, you're on mute? Uh, sorry, hello. Um, I'm so sorry. I, um, I had this uh, conversation with uh, the lady in my breakout room earlier. I thought as a seagull, we weren't actually supposed to do anything. Um, I confess I'd not been as engaged as I'm supposed to be because as I did um, mention in the chat, I got dragged into something and I've only been listening. I've not, you know, um, been engaging fully. But I, but funnily, funnily in, in, enough, I thought seagulls were not supposed to do anything. They're not supposed to do anything as a seagull. And, and what, you, what you explain is for me typically a seagull behavior. As I was there, but not really there. I was thinking about something else, and that's okay. And you know, I'm an expert, I'm working on my domain, that tips, and the guys do not understand my expertise. This is Aaron, my friend. You're on mute, or are you just listening? He's hiding. That's good. Chris Gillespie. I was very definitely a cat. I kind of detached and curled my tail around me and just listened to everything that was going on. Yeah, um, yeah very definitely a cat. Okay, excellent. Stefan? 100% cat. You could do the work. <laughs> Get on with it. Yeah. I'm not interested. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, so, so what uh, do we experiment here? Uh, we are experimenting something we can really see also in in uh, in organization is when you increase the size where it's not enough space to do the work you are just 
become a cat, even if you're a pig by nature. It's just because the context doesn't allow you to express your uh, abilities. Or you become a seagull, it's how you react when you don't have space. If you want to contribute, you can come and say, like a business analyst, oh, this is unfair, this is not possible. So you're more in a seagull mode. Or you want absolutely forcing the tray and you want to be into it, then you be can become a bull. Or maybe you can't be really a fox because it's nothing to steal because it's all about one team, right? But usually become a cat because I say, where do I need to start? I don't know. And it's lost, lost in, in, in the space. And yes, and this is what we can see. This is one, maybe it's not um, um, obvious for you now, uh, today in this game, but this is how you understand the team dynamics. When there is not enough work, you will have a lot of cats. And then you discover about the team sizing, about what we call the pizza teams, like uh, under, under five, you, you can do things, but maybe you have way too much things to do. Over nine, it's more dynamic. Uh, 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 until nine is quite more dynamic. Over nine, there will place for cats. And we don't want to have cats in the teams. It means also, if you identif identify cats in your organization, it doesn't mean they are lazy by nature. Think about, is there enough space for them to express their talents? Um, I fight most of the time with uh, seagulls. So you're typically subject matter expert. I'm working a lot in SAP over moments. And so we have a lot of experts subject and they have all opinion, not listening, they're not team players at all. So we try even to move them. Um, agile coaches, we are very good to be uh, seagulls. We have always a good opinion about everything. It's not really helpful, but I'm, I'm the first one. And yes, and so here, usually team of nine, you can do it with 15 or 20. You will have just maybe two pigs because the requirements and the time we give is maybe just for two, maximum three pigs, not more. And all the others are becoming cats or becoming, and you have people, I had people crying, say, I want to draw, there's no space, where, have, where can I do it? And so it's quite uh, terrible. So yes, that's it. This is uh, how I work, how I use this work. I do posters. I do posters of these um, uh, behaviors and we put in, in the rooms, the posters with the teams. And from time to time we make retrospectives. And this is uh, a more fun on, on not finger pointing. It means let's say if I take here an example or I had struggled with Ula during the sprint and I say, hey Ula, the last time, oh, you behave with me like, like a bull, and I didn't like it. And then you give me an answer. Yes, Pierre, but at this moment in time, I was a little bit annoyed because I thought you were a cat. And this is a way to remove the drama in this uh, Las Vegas meeting of retrospective. Because to be honest, be always nice, making appreciative inquiry, it's quite lovely. But in reality, it's tough because sometimes you have emotions, you have temper. And it's also embracing the emotions and the temper of everyone. And it helped to un undermine the, the negative effects, being able to tell, I, I thought at this moment in time, it is, you behave like this. I had teams a couple of years ago, uh, seven teams in Brussels, working very agile way, very strongly, but we behave badly with the infrastructure team. At the moment that the head of infrastructure came out of a meeting, he was crying. And in our jargon, I came back to the team, hey guys, here's something wrong. We behave like bulls with this guy's infrastructure. It meant something very specific for the old team members. See, then you have like, oh shit, we played the bad guys, right? Yeah, and it's not, it's not negative, it's not a material process. It just means we have all these animals in us 
And maybe sometimes it's not your day, right? And maybe sometimes you're under pressure. And having these animals say, hey, bulls here, no, no, not allowed. And then have even in the jargon, when the team members have to go in of a management meeting, they call it chicken run. So really, I have to go there, the chicken run is just noisy. Let me do the job. And it, it's quite also very simple to explain that we want to build a pig pen with only pigs as an other organizations. And when you build multiple teams, I had companies with 500 to 5,000 teams, you understand the more, the more bigger you become, the risk is that you may be a team of pigs doing management or maybe a big program, a bigger product. You're maybe at one moment in time, a bull or maybe a seagull for the other teams. So it's quite interesting having this kind of jargon, which is, I can't say nonviolent, it's a little bit violent too, but it's quite a positive way to create a dialogue because it's not about you as a person, is oh, hey, shit happens, and that's okay. It's, it's about the behavior. It's behavior, only the behavior. I love it. And yes, and uh, I used to work a lot in the Middle East and also with the different uh, people from different countries, a lot of Germans, Russians, Nordic countries, Poland, and Brazilians, and uh, people from Argentina, and even from India. We have cultural biases, and this is our embrace, embrace the biases, because it's creating who you are. And having this kind of jargon helps you also say, oh, maybe you thought um, I'm a cat, but I'm more introvert, I'm more quiet, because my culture means I have to be very respectful, et cetera. I'm not jumping into it. And then you're working maybe with a very young German guy who is saying, oh, for me, you were a bull. Say, I'm not a bull. No, because it's how they behave, right? And this means, uh, and when I say no every five minutes, you have to understand it doesn't mean a no against you. They think about how they solve the problem. <laughs> and so it's helping create the connection in a very, very easy way. And it's never ever, um, um, let's say, um, a, mat a matrix, a team organization matrix. Because typically, uh, and uh, I can measure it in the dailies with the teams, you know, because sometimes we had carnival. So carnival, um, Germany, I didn't say it here, but Germany, usually they're, they're getting them making party, right? And then you go on a Tuesday of carnival Tuesday, you see the faces of the guys. You say they didn't sleep that well, and you're just happy not being uh, on site with them because maybe you have a smell of alcohol, right? And they should be able to say, oh, Pierre, or oh, hey, team, I have a hangover. I'm not able to work that hard today, but I help you maybe to finish something. And you should be allowed to be maybe having a day you are more a cat than a pig because it's not your day. And that's okay. Simple game, huge reactions. We didn't sew it that much because you were way too analytical. Um, these games exist also for Arabic countries. I give it a lot of times in Arabic countries and people ask me, oh, Pierre, you know, pigs doesn't work. So you, you work the whole night to say, oh, instead of having pizza, have cheeps. Then you run around the, the, the game in a workshop uh, in Dubai. Yeah, at the end, people are just laughing like crazy. Because on site, you have this kind of, you're feeling the dynamics. And they say, oh, we, we knew the story with pigs. So I spent the whole night just to design another story to get this. And so I were absolutely stupid on this. Any questions? You're way too serious. And on site, when you make the second part, first part is about learning, collective learning about the roles. You, when you work in a team, you have to detect who played what role. So usually have cards, I hide the cards, choose the role you want to play. Then you have to identify to learn. Second round, I give the cards and you have to hide the cards with the, the animals on it. And then you say, and you play the role and you have, again, have to detect what kind of animal you played and your neighbor played. 
That's quite fun. And usually I make mix of seagulls and bulls. Maybe you can see the level of noise on you have, you have people argumenting, right? Doing it, then you have no results. But having just this kind of fun is very helpful. Second part is what we did. The third part is what we did is as a big team, no games. It's more about analyzing, understanding, and feeling how a big organization can get lead you in the negative behavior. So it's not about you, it's about how the system is designed. I had also a fourth, a fourth iteration. We don't want to do it today. When I ask as a team, and please, you have five minutes, exactly the same requirements. But I want to have uh, the work flows from in the project management team, handing over to the development team, handing over to the QA, and handing over to the delivery teams. Then you can see again how it happens. Usually at the end, you have nothing. It's mostly stuck in the delivery team because project manager will take time. And you can ask telling this like this. If people were clever, they will make one team having one different ball so they don't care, right? So you don't have the silos. And you see naturally people moving in the silos. And then you have again, something to work on it with the team. It is a different understanding. It is the same problem from a different angle. So it's, it's a serious game. It's not only about the fun. It's something you learn about how it is. And I do this game also with executives. We bought, I have coach agile teams from executives. Uh, my board of director is an agile team. And they do exactly the same exercises. Any questions? You are so enthusiastic. How can you refrain all these emotions in you? This is ter terrible. Actually, for me, it's really hard to, to speak, but uh, I, I want to share my experience. I met this game. I mean, we and Pierre knows each other since a few years. We met at Play 14. And I played this game since three years. And um, I played during the scrum ceremony. I give cards to the team members and I say, okay, now let's do a daily stand up, but you have to play this role. I mean, you cannot imagine how it can be effective for the people to be part of the act for that. It's really amazing. And, and sometimes you have very fun reactions. Uh, I have these five minutes of, of, of the, a, a team of ladies working in Lebanon. And I say, Pierre, can we change the world? We want to be pigs. We want to do things. Yes, Mega? So you use only this animal, like cat, bull, seagull, uh, pig, like only like a couple of, only those animals do you use? Yeah, for only, this game? Only, only this. It's largely enough to, in, to get. And these are really stereotypes, you know, big stereotypes. Okay. Um, because it's not analytical. It's just behavioral and how you understand. Mm -hmm. I, to, I have um, colleagues in Italy and in France that try to have different kind of pigs. Say, no, you're committed or you're not committed. It's have to be very quite binary. Uh, yes? Where are you located? Please what? Where are you located? I'm in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh-huh. That's um, my bucket list. I've been once, but I have to come back. Yeah, we have a lot of chocolate. And, and uh, she and <laughs> uh, Pierre. Yes. Hello. I think. Um, well, I think this is really not for, for you, but more for everybody else. If you've actually read the book um, Animal Farm, I think the stereotypes will make a lot more sense to you. I read it because, yes, because my youngest daughter had it at school. I say, oh, I have to read it. But yep. uh, it's it's another story. Yes, it's just that the, the uh, what, what I'm actually pointing out is that the personas that you've chosen actually map very well against the uh, personas in the or characters within that particular story. 
so just speaking to what um, I'm not sure who the ladies who just spoke asked you about, if you could change the personas. The re I think the reason why it makes sense to keep them as they are is because when you understand how they came about and what role they played in that particular story, you can see exactly how it translates into the exercise. Yeah, but uh, I just refer to one book which is written in, it's my book. So it's in my book. <laughs> I, in my book on, on AO, I de uh, describe it because I use it as an introduction. It's one of the game of organization design and how to design agile organizations. It's how it is. It's a, a way to explain uh, how you have engagement. Then you can uh, roll out about the idea of when people say, oh, if you want to organize here, I have to have role and responsibilities. And you have a different level. If you have role and responsibilities, like who is respons responsible it means pigs. So do we have pigs everywhere? Good. Or you're on a meeting. So then you make meetings only with pigs. And if the meeting is not for pigs, maybe for chicken, then you say maybe it's an impediment, a destruction for the team on performance. Uh -huh. And so uh, it's simple, very, very simple thing, but you can, uh, it's quite metaphoric in a way you can discover a lot of things that doesn't work, that helps the team to move forward. And not only in the agile mode. Uh -huh. Because if you're using quite American jargon and you have to be hyper-performing and you have to have the best, always for it person and the check out when you, when you have time, you have to be productive all the time and say, no, you have to, you can have time for idleness. You can have time to think about something else. It all depends who you are. So it's, then you say, okay, I would take my cat time then you know it's okay, back. Then I'm back in my rut or I'm back in my, in my pick time. And this, you can use this kind of jargon. Everybody knows what it's all about it. I see you're so convinced. I see sparkles in your eyes. <laughs> you're, are you trying to analyze everything? So here, typically, it's helpful um, in, in a way, if you want to design uh, an agile organization, which is nonlinear, um, where very in a complex world, in a way you are looking for interactions. If you have a sound, maybe a little bit of complex system theories, like uh, with the tool of Kenefin, you can explain, okay, how it works. It's all about this part, when we're looking up on agile, when we want to have this kind of innovation, problem solving, permanent collective work, there is no need of leadership at all. Or maybe people say, oh yes, we are all leaders. We all share the leadership. But in fact, you don't need it because you have this kind of interaction of everyone. This is what we're looking when we say we're going to be agile or want to go digital, whatever. This is typically what is in the mind of everyone. All right. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Have we got any other questions? So the metaphor, I think, is very helpful. Mm. But I keep coming back to the point that it's just a snapshot. And people that are truly agile are able to take on different personas at different times. And they're able to blend in different personas to be able to work. And yeah, and now the point is, are we all the time purely agile? No. And agile is very good for triage situations. Mm -hmm. But when you've got large companies that need pastoral care, which perhaps this would fit into because it's got the farming metaphor on it. Uh, and at the end of it, there's the um, palliative care where the things naturally come to an end. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, but um, what I saw, we have a lot of people well-known considering they are agile and the nobody community, 
And when you work with agile teams and they, what the heck are you talking about? So they're really not agile. And you have some games I do with agile coaches. I'm the first to start crying as it, who are you? You're just business analysts, hello. So it's quite interesting having our, to kick ourselves sometimes. Yes, but what, what I find with most agile teams is that they go out, they read the book and really they're just sheep, intellectual sheep. Um, so they follow the process. Quite negative as a metaphor, so I wanted to avoid. I prefer cat <laughs> in this way. Cheap is, I, I, if you know, you have the feeling when you, as an observer, you take a look and say, oh, these are cheap, they're just following. In fact, they just, they, they just don't want to contribute. So it's more like a cat situation, right? Like, uh, okay, I'm following. Or oh, you're in control, let me, no change at all. I love my comfort. I love having Putin governing the, the country. No, we don't challenge everything. It's good. So, uh, and it's so. The other way of doing it is to measure the psychological place of the team, and then get them to change it. The context, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I find that that's useful because it gives people the ability to um, be independent within the group. And to affect a change that sticks takes six to eight weeks, which you don't get in most agile organizations where it's the two week sprint or the one week sprint and people um, fail fast. Yeah, you're, you're right. But there is a one, one, there is a, another thing, which is uh, all these large transformation when people are just coming, doing again and again the same mistakes, coming with methods and tools. Ah, so. The way that we do transformations at the moment, they only 25% succeed because people try to do it top down. Whereas if you can change the place, the, the psychological space that a team is in and do it on a team per team basis and share the good results from one team with other teams, you get a better success rate because you're sharing the bits that are valid from one team to another. So that's taking in economies of scope where one team tries it and has an extended period, which might be six to eight weeks, and then they can share it with other teams. And you find that the kudos um, starts to create more of a, a virtuous cycle rather than a downward spiral. It's the new um No, you, you're absolutely right. The change, you're right by saying the change is a bottom-up action. It's never a top-down. I had agile teams and you go to them and you spoke and in dailies, in the dailies, you have management, customer, everyone in a daily and yep. the team own it. And you have a very high level conversation. And they were all, so you have like this kind of family feeling. You say, didn't happen that much. Uh, but when you see it, you say, wow, that's off. And people like it. And, and then you say, oh, we have a reorg, you have a new boss, a new letter, and people, team say, so what? We don't care. And even that don't care, it's not important because they have this. Now we have enough an evolution based on what you say and also on the context. And sometimes you have to be, a team is not forever. And it should be not forever. And even again, it's a bottom up, not forever. Hmm. And not a top down. If you make top down, you destroy the dynamics. It's a bottom up, and uh, this uh, uh, this is typically when we, we are moving from one quarter. So what you call people PI, whatever I call it, quarterly planning is just an alignment meeting with everyone, and 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 then we ask, okay, what is the end to end of the team? And because when you open the Pandora box, you stop working, and then you discover that maybe you're no longer end to end. There are more or more dependencies. Yeah. Then at the end, you say a team member say, okay. I'm working with the team, better have to attend the other team for the meeting because there is uh, what I'm good in. I say, okay, choose, stay with the team, then work on something else or go in the new team for the next quarter. Yeah, so the way that I like to do that is to stream the workflows based uh -huh. on media companies. So you can have news, which is continuous CI, CD releases. Yeah. You can have soap operas where you're building something and it's going out two or three times a week. You can have serials where you've got a weekly release of something being built. 
That's more like in the cars at the moment when your car upgrades its own systems every week. You can have features, which are the one-offs, and then you've got the blockbuster stuff at the bottom, which is real Hollywood, the big build that one takes through. But what we tend to do is compress everything into as if we're still making buildings. We still get the building metaphor of making systems rather than moving towards the experiences that people need. And meaning, so we are the building metaphor with having no clue how to build a building. Because if you go with builders, they are very agile. If you're working even with manufacturing people, they're way more agile than agile teams. Because you have agile manufacturing is an evolution of lean manufacturing, who has become then after five years after the manifesto. So, but it's about understanding the cycle. But we have a lot of noise in, in the IT world, and now is merging. So we, now we have business agility. Is so what the heck is this? Because uh, the manifesto says it's simple: business and, and IT people working daily together. It means I don't deliver IT; I deliver a solution to a customer. And you maybe have IT people in it. So it's the approach. And then people say, uh, what is, do it simple. But then yes. maybe you can't stay forever in one stick. You have to be able to remove. Yeah. So um, the point I'm sorry, but I'm quite conscious of time because it's already 10.30. Right. And <laughs> I know with these topics, we, we could go in forever. <laughs> um, so I have to be that black person who will stop you here. Um, I think we can stop recording as well, Karada, if you could do that, maybe. That'd be useful.